Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Sophie Erber. And I'm Tim Seaman. Iowa Governor Kim Reynolds' week-long bill barrage continues today. Her latest signing makes significant changes to laws involving law enforcement members. That's right. What's in the new Back the Blue Act in our top story at 6. Last summer, when lawless mobs across the country co-opted peaceful protest to riot and loot, Iowa experienced its share of unrest. The Back the Blue Act responds by making rioting a felony. So if you riot, if you loot, if you attack our law, law officers, then you will be punished. Governor Reynolds says that her black, uh, back the blue law, I should say, sends a signal to officers that Iowa supports them. The blue law adds qualified immunity, giving officers stronger lawsuit protections as well. It also makes rioting a felony now and raises the charges for unlawful assembly to aggravated misdemeanors. The bill had a controversial run in the legislature. Democrats slammed it, saying it's a step backwards from the police accountability law signed just last year. I am frustrated. I am so dismayed over what's going on with this bill. And I think that if we don't pave the way for better police reform, we're going to see more dangers ahead. The governor had also called for a racial profiling ban in the legislators in the legislation, but lawmakers did not include the ban in that bill. Reynolds says she's committed to doing that next session. It has been three weeks since an 11-year-old Iowa boy went missing in his hometown of Montezuma. And as the search of Xavier Harlson continues, a local self-defense instructor says that he's seeing more parents seeking training classes for their kids. Jimmy Donlin says that some area martial arts studios are seeing parents become more proactive. Tiger Rock Martial Arts here in Sioux City holds self-defense classes for kids as young as four. The head instructor says interest is up. What's happening is parents want their child to be aware and of their surroundings and when they're out in the community, and we give them that sense of knowledge in every class that we teach. Coming up at 10, KCAU 9 reporter Jason Toktasian shows us what the classes teach, and we'll hear from that instructor as well about that increased interest from parents in self-defense. A much of Sioux landed again under a heat advisory on this Thursday, and that could mean dangerous temperatures, especially when you're talking about children being left inside those hot cars. That's right, anything left inside a hot car in this day that's living. KCAU 9's Hannah Adamson spoke with local law enforcement agencies about just how hot it really gets for kids in those situations with more now. Hannah? Well, Tim and Sophie, I'm in one of our station cars outside the studio. I've got my handy-dandy thermometer with me. If I point it outside and I wait a couple seconds, it's going to tell me it's 99 degrees. But in here, it's going to feel a lot hotter. With the windows rolled up, we're talking about 20 degrees hotter. So that's about 119 degrees. Now, you factor in the heat index as well. We're talking around 125 degrees field-like temperature in this car. Now, I spoke with Officer Andrew Dutler with the City Police Department. He tells me even with the window rolled down a little bit, it isn't going to do that much to bring those temperatures down. So coming up tonight at 10, we'll show you what you can do if you notice a child or a pet stuck in a hot car. For now, reporting just outside the KCAU 9 News Studio, Hannah Adamson, KCAU 9 News. All right, thanks for that, Hannah. And an important reminder for Siouxland drivers, overnight ramp closures will wrap up tonight on Interstate 29. Starting at 9 p.m., tonight's closures will apply to the entrance ramp at Wesley Parkway, the exit ramp at Virginia Street, and also the entrance ramp at Floyd Boulevard. Now, each closure is expected to take roughly two hours. This, of course, is due to that pavement project underway. The DOT says everything will be open by 6 a.m., on Friday morning. So good news and quick work there. Indeed, a lot of folks uh, back in the commute in the morning. Right. Scott, any cooler tomorrow as they head off? <laughs> yes, it should become cooler on Friday. We also expect to see a few thunder showers in the area. So it does look like a change of pace after several days with far hotter than average temperatures. Looking at those highs from across Siouxland today, many triple digit temperatures, especially in the southern half of Siouxland. Norfolk getting close at 99, 96 in Sioux City today. 93 degrees in Sheldon. We have been
been tracking a handful of showers and thunderstorms on the radar. Not a whole lot happening at the moment, but you can see that we do have a severe weather risk for tonight. Looks like things will be pretty isolated with a better opportunity coming for northeastern parts of Iowa into Wisconsin and Illinois. We'll talk further about the cool down coming up in just a few minutes. Back to you. All right, thanks, Scott. Now, you've probably heard about the continued supply chain issues happening nationwide. Those shortages are affecting both businesses and everyday consumers. And KCAU 9 News reporter Mallory Smith dives deeper into what could happen as a result of these supply chain issues. Mallory? With struggle comes recovery. That's what Associate Professor of Economics Catherine Berkland says our country is going through right now as we try to overcome problems in the consumer world brought on by the pandemic. The recent spike in supply shortages is overwhelming some Siouxland businesses. Well, the dealers aren't able to get inventory from the manufacturers because the manufacturers aren't able to get all the parts that they need for the cars. Um, so if you look at the lots in Sioux City, almost all of the dealers are short on inventory. Which is driving the price of used vehicles up a lot. Even local coffee shops are having trouble getting the basics. We're seeing really odd shortages, even down to like plastic straws, lids, cups. Coffee beans have been pretty good, but even recently we've been having trouble getting coffee beans. Other operations like lumber companies are also having problems keeping up with customers' needs. But as the demand increases, usually so do the prices, which has some experts worried about inflation. When we see an increase in the demand um, and, and the supply hasn't caught up yet, that extra demand, we call it the shortage uh, or this excess demand part, eventually the prices will rise to get rid of that, uh, that shortage. That's what's supposed to happen. Inflation is roughly at 4% right now. Berkland says that's not unusual for a country in an economic recovery. It, it's definitely something to pay attention to, and you can't deny when you go to the grocery store and it's, you know, a, a lot more than you had been spending previously. And area business owners are learning to roll with the punches while still serving their customers. We as a company have bought way more inventory than we normally do to try to beat price increases and make sure that we can take care of our customers. Berkland sees the similarities between what we're expecting now and back in the 70s when the focus was fixing unemployment issues and not focusing so much on inflation. Mallory Smith, KCA United News. Thanks, Mallory. It has been a busy day here around our studios and around the office. Yes. KCAU 9's parent company is celebrating its 25th anniversary. And so we pitched in with some community service today. It was all part of Nexstar Media's Founders Day of Caring. And here in Sioux City, the KCAU 9 crew spent some time out at Bacon Creek Park. About half of our staff was able to get out of the office on this hot day and volunteer. Finding some trash at the uh, dog park uh, there at Bacon Creek Park as well as the trails. But I will say the park was amazingly clean today as we walk the trails. Keeping Siouxland clean, indeed, part of a commitment to the community. It's something we do uh, every day at KCAU. We're looking for ways to give back to the community with all the community service projects we do throughout the year. It's, it's, it's our way of life. The fact that it was already uh, pretty clean is a testament really to the community here because we like to take care of our parks. That's a beautiful spot. I like to go there as well. There's the proof right there. Our bags were barely a fourth full. I know some of us took trash out of the little garbage cans <laughs> just to good move trash from one place to another to keep the park clean. But uh, a nice morning out there before it really did heat up. Yes, and it did heat up for sure. We'll hear more about that coming up soon. But South Dakota is known for its wild beauty. It's also home to a sanctuary now for some wild animals. We'll take you to to one of the country's top wild horse sanctuaries. That's all still coming up. Sounds like a fun place to go. Well, a few thunderstorms a possibility for tonight. We are going to gradually cool things off. Some more rain chances also in our future. Your 9 on 9 forecast coming up next. You're watching KCAU 9 News with Tim Seaman, Sophie Herber, Chief Meteorologist Scott Larson, and Sports Director Jake Jones. This is KCAU 9 News at 6. One of those days where uh, every business you run in and out of is highly refrigerated. The AC <laughs> is pumping. Just so the way you want it. Right. Well, yeah. I found when I got into my car, I didn't turn on the AC for a minute. I said, I can do it. 
And then I realized that I needed to roll the windows yeah, down and were made. quickly, maybe, yes, change the temperature. Maybe some of Mother Nature's uh, AC coming our way? It Soon. Yeah, it looks that way. Uh, tomorrow, the high temperature is just going to be about 90. Just so, there you uh, go. Only 90. You know, that's, that's an improvement versus where we have been. So there are some things to look forward to, especially next week. We'll go over that here in the forecast as we look outside in Sioux Center, Iowa. This is on the campus of Dort University. Things pretty quiet with tons of sun and heat. Once again, the story hasn't changed a whole lot. You'd stay on Sunday. Temperatures in the mid to upper 70s for highs Monday and Tuesday next week. And overnight lows look to fall into the 40s and 50s. So some nice weather to be able to open up the windows and shut off the AC at least for a couple days there. Back into the 80s on Wednesday and it looks like most of next week will be dry with the exception of a few showers on Tuesday evening. Here's what things looked like in Alta, Iowa last night. Thanks to uh, Rachel for passing in this picture of some hail between a half inch and an inch in diameter covering the ground there in Buena Vista County. If you have a picture that you want to share from the storms that occurred or anything else going on in Siouxland, just go to our website, SiouxlandProud.com. Some pretty big hail. Glad uh, everyone's all right. No reports of any injuries. So. Yeah, some uh, pretty substantial storms last night, especially Ida Grove hit pretty hard. All right, Scott, thanks. Not totally unusual to find a horse <laughs> resting in a pasture or maybe just hanging out in a stable. But one woman is now protecting horses in their natural environment. And we'll take you to where these wild horses roam free in the state of South Dakota, coming up next. Well, you might be surprised to know that one of the world's premier wild horse sanctuaries uh, is located right in South Dakota. That's right, and it's a nationwide thing. Tom Hansen takes us to the Black Hills Wild Horse Sanctuary. Hundreds of horses and ponies roam this land south of Hot Springs. No barns or outbuildings. They live in the open, under the sun. They eat the wild grass and drink from the stream that runs through the land. They are wild and survive as a herd with leaders and followers, just like their ancestors hundreds of years ago. The Black Hills Wild Horse Sanctuary came to be in 1987. Governor George Mickelson invited author and conservationist Dayton High to South Dakota and helped him set up the sanctuary, which now encompasses 11,000 acres. Susan Watt joined the effort in the mid-90s and now runs the nonprofit. So we have Spanish horses, curly horses, Choctaw Indian ponies, American Mustangs, Spanish Mustangs, Sulphur Mustangs, all kinds of horses. Horses are social animals, and like all groups, there are disagreements. But Watt calls this a happy place. So this is a place of healing. It's a place of healing for horses that have been pushed around, harassed, uh, threatened, their lives threatened. A lot of the horses here were already on the slaughter bus headed to slaughter in the truck. The majority of the horses at the sanctuary would be dead if they'd not been rescued. Most come from Bureau of Land Management land located around the country. They also come from state governments and failed adoptions. They give you a sense of hope and peace. And they're so grateful that they have a nice place to be. I think if I was a horse, I'd be happy to be in South Dakota, too. Yeah, look, <laughs> look beautiful there where they were parked. Yeah. Last two days, we've had now horses and moose, <laughs> uh, buffalo. Isn't that no real time? transition Wild for you here? Wildlife Channel. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, at this point, isn't that the buffalo roam, horses roam? I think that was the pun intended by our producer, so I'm glad you picked up on it, too. I do what I can. And uh, now sports. Yeah, sports is, sports is here. Uh, it was really hot. Uh, I don't know if you guys have been outside. Very hot to be at the ballpark this afternoon. Got some highlights from West High. Plus, Shelby Houlihan receiving some news on her Olympic trial status. I've got those details and more coming up next in sports. Welcome back, gang. The Shelby Houlihan saga adding a new chapter today. The former East High Black Raider was informed that despite her recent four-year ban from the World Athletic Doping Agency, that she will be allowed to run in the Olympic trials. Their reason for allowing her is that her appeal of her ban is still pending, and therefore there's still a chance she could overturn the ruling that would keep her out of this year's Olympics, which are a little over a month away. Right now, Houlihan is on the start list for the 1,500 and 5,000 meter run for tomorrow's prelims in Eugene, Oregon. CEO of the USATF, Max Siegel, explaining his decision, saying, you can always resolve the outcome later, but you can't rerun a race. Although there is no word yet on if Shelby will be attending tomorrow's preliminary. Lake. 
falls out of the polls from number 14 after three straight losses. How far away till state championships? A couple, two weeks, three weeks till they get tournament started. For baseball? Or, or either softball, baseball. Baseball, softball, uh, about a month. Oh, wow. Month, okay. So still, still some time. Some time. Yeah. Yeah, some if they season. don't melt away. <laughs> right. <laughs> Stay hydrated out there. Thanks, Jake. Can we check in for one final look at our hot forecast? First, let's take you outside right now here in Siouxland. Welcome back. It's going to become cooler outside as we bring in some rain chances for the weekend. Look forward to that. Yes, I never thought I'd say that, but thank you, Scott. Thank you all. Thanks for joining us. We'll all see you at 10. Good night. Good night. <laughs>